Hello fellow key shooter. In this tutorial, I want to show you how to create volumetric lighting like you see in this shot. Inside Keyshot, I have my product, I have a ground plane setup, and I have a camera in place. To create the volumetric lighting, we need two more elements. We need a cube with the scattering medium material, and we need a physical light source. And in this case, I'm going to use the spotlight, as I have found that it works the best for creating these kind of volumetric effects. So let's dig straight into it and go ahead and add in a cube or sphere to add the spotlight material to. Looks good like that. So I double click the sphere, change the material type here to spotlight. All right, so here in the geometry view, you can click this button here to open it up if you don't have it already. We can see our spotlight and the direction that it's uh, shining. So right now it's towards the ground. If I go to the scene tree, select the sphere here, right click in my geometry view and select move selection. I can go ahead and move it up. And what I wanna do is to place the lighting or the spotlight here on the backside and shine light towards the camera. So to do that, I rotate it and I move it like this to the backside here. And I think I'll just put it here for now to uh, do the fine tuning. We need to have the scattering medium in as well. So I hit OK to that. And then I go ahead and go to edit, go to add geometry and add in a cube. All right, so hit OK over here in the real time view. And here in the geometry view, I right click and select move selection. And activate my scale handle and then pick the yellow cube here in the center and scale this cube up to contain the entire scene. So our ground plane, our camera, our lighting, our product is inside this cube. Then I open up my library panel and I search for fog here in the uh, material library. And then I take this one scattering medium fog basic and drag it to the cube like that. All right, so now it already starts to look pretty cool. Um, and we need to adjust a few things uh, for now. At the moment, our environment is set to the basic startup and we don't want to have any light coming from the surroundings. So I add in a new environment and I go to settings and take the brightness down to zero. So now we only have the lighting coming from this spotlight here. And it seems to be pretty bright. So if I try and double click on it here in the geometry view, uh, I can select it because I will select the box instead. And by the way, if you can't see anything, try and go ahead and select this uh, display style and select wireframe. If you have it to flat, you only see the cube. Wireframe. All right. So let me go to my scene tree here, double click my light and take this down to maybe two watts. That looks quite better. I also want to give it a blue color. So I hit the color swatch and drag it to something blue. So now I might have to bump it up to 10 watts. That looks pretty good. Let me double click the cube here to go in and edit our fuck and I don't have any specific values that works all the time, but I found for this particular shot that a transparency distance of 500 millimeters, and uh, this is of course always in relation to the size of your scene. So in this case, our product is pretty small, and that means that the uh, tra transparency distance of the fog doesn't need to be that big. So 50 centimeters that this is, uh, is good for this kind of scene. But if it was like a, a house where you wanted the fog uh, or the volumetric lighting to come from the back, you would probably need to go with 100 meters or 50 meters instead. For the density, I found that a value of four gave me the look that I wanted to. So the higher this is, the more dense the fog will be and the more visible these light rays will be. Um, so if we take it up to 10, for example, you can see that it starts to get uh, really, really dense and doesn't look too good. So let me back that down to four. And then I also found that bumping this scattering directionality up to a value close to one also helps to make these 
rays look more visible. The maximum value is 1, but if we take it up to that, something strange happens. So if I go with point 0.8, for example, we really clearly see these uh, lines. So this is a bit too much. Let me back it down a bit and maybe let me select my spotlight and take the brightness down as well. But I think we start to arrive at something really cool here. And what is left is to select the spotlight, do it here in the scene tree, right click in the geometry view and select move selection, and then fine tune the position. So if we drag it to the side, we will see we get these rays moving more to the left and vice versa when we take it to the right. You can also play with the vertical positioning of the light and maybe try and do something like that. Move it up to see how that looks. So there's a lot of cool things you can do depending on how you position the lighting uh, in relation to your product. I think for now, I wanna go with this kind of look. So let's try and see. That looks good. So the scattering medium is one of the most heavy materials in Keyshot. So expect some rendering time to get uh, all this noise to go away. And when you do the final output here in options, don't be surprised if you need to go to around 4,000 samples to get it uh, smooth looking. Uh, it's not unusual for this material. So have patience and uh, then you will see some great results. And that's all. So I hope this uh, tutorial inspired you to do some volumetric lighting in your own shots. And I'm really looking forward to see what you create. Subscribe and like, and thanks for watching. Until next time, take care.